Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Let x and a be real numbers. If x belongs to the neighborhood v epsilon of a for every epsilon greater than zero, then x is equal to a. Now, first of all, what's a neighborhood? Well, if you recall, the way a neighborhood is defined can be as follows. Given two real numbers, a and epsilon, where epsilon is greater than zero, we say that the epsilon neighborhood of a is this set. It's the set of all real numbers x that satisfy absolute value of x minus a is less than epsilon. And in proving this theorem, we're going to rely on the following fact. Suppose a is a real number. If zero is less than or equal to a is less than epsilon for every epsilon greater than zero, then a is equal to zero. Now, in the book that I'm basing this proof off of, this fact is given by theorem 2.1.9. The book, by the way, is Intro to Real Analysis by Bartle and Sherbert, fourth edition. Okay, now let's get into proving the theorem. So to start out our proof, let's give ourselves two arbitrary real numbers, x and a. And our whole goal now is to prove if this is true, then x is equal to a. So let's suppose that this is true. And our whole goal now is to deduce that x is equal to a. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to show that the absolute value of x minus a is equal to zero. And the way we're going to show that is by applying theorem 2.1.9. So really, based on what we have written here, we're going to take capital A to be absolute value of x minus a. And what we're gonna do is we're going to show that for every epsilon greater than zero, zero is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus a, which is less than epsilon. If we can show that by this theorem, it implies that absolute value of x minus a is equal to zero. So. What's the statement we're trying to prove here? We're trying to prove that for every epsilon greater than zero, zero is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus a, which is less than epsilon. Since we're trying to prove a statement about all positive real numbers, give me an arbitrary positive real number. I'll call it epsilon. Now, since epsilon is greater than zero, and we know that this statement works for every positive real number, it must work for the epsilon that we just introduced. So we can be sure that x is an element of the epsilon of a. What does it mean for x to be an element of the epsilon of a? Well, by definition, it means that the absolute value of x minus a is less than epsilon. But if we recall, the absolute value of any number is greater than or equal to zero. And since the absolute value of x minus a is greater than or equal to zero, we have that zero is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus a, which is less than epsilon. So what just happened here? Well, putting this together, we gave ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, and we showed that zero is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus a, which is less than epsilon. Since epsilon greater than zero was arbitrary, this means for every epsilon greater than zero, zero is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus a, which is less than epsilon. So we have proven precisely the hypothesis of theorem 2.1.9. And since we've proven the hypothesis of theorem 2.1.9, it follows by theorem 2.1.9 that absolute value of x minus a is equal to zero. And since the absolute value of x minus a is equal to zero, well, if you recall, whenever we have the absolute value of a number equal to zero, this implies that the number itself must equal zero. And since x minus a is equal to zero, this implies that x is equal to a. And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.